So about a year ago, I actually started doing these 10 things to make something better. And I started off doing Dragon Ball GT. And now out of that video, two things came about. One was, how bad is that video? Agreed. But also, people just asked me, why didn't I do Dragon Ball Evolution? So as a one year anniversary special, here it is. That is so bad. Dragon Ball Evolution is a 2009 science fiction action film directed by James Wan. The film is very loosely based on the Japanese Dragon Ball manga and anime created by Akira Toriyama. In the film, the young Goku reveals his past and sets out to fight the evil alien warlord, Lord Piccolo, who wishes to gain the powerful Dragon Balls and use them to take over the Earth. When the film was released, it got slated and got lots of negative reviews by both critics and by Dragon Ball fans, particularly for its script, its cast and its unfaithfulness to the source material. So that's what I'm here to do today, what I do best, talk about 10 things that can make Dragon Ball Evolution better. Number 10, Gohan. So throughout the entire manga and even the anime, one of the driving principles of Goku was his grandpa, and that was Gohan. Gohan stuck these so much important life lessons into him, they stuck with him, even all the way up to Dragon Ball Super. Gohan's lessons are always there. So why was Gohan in this film? He shouldn't have been. He was dead by the time Goku turned 18, and we'll get to that bit later as well. But yeah, that was the whole driving force. That's why he was so protective of everything, was because Gohan died when he was still a baby, still very young. But also, how Gohan died was also completely wrong. He wasn't killed by Piccolo. No, Krillin was the one that was killed by Piccolo's henchmen to start with. He was killed by, you, spoiler, Goku. Yep, Goku killed his own grandpa, but he didn't find that one out until the beginning of Dragon Ball Z. That's what makes the manga and the TV series so brilliant, is all these storylines. It took years before Goku found out about that. But the whole thing about Gohan, no. Just skip it, he didn't need it. Number nine, Goku. So I can't make a list about what was wrong about that film without mentioning Goku. Now I'm going to be controversial, I didn't actually mind Justin Chadwick's uh, interpretation of Goku with what he had. He tried and failed, but he did try. You could see who was trying to bring out Goku's cheekiness, goofiness and all that lot. But it wasn't his fault why it was wrong. One, Goku was too old. He was 18 in this film. He was, what, 12 when Dragon Ball first started? He'd never seen another human being, yet he's at school in this film. He had this wildness about him, but he was actually quite mellow-headed in this. And yeah, just everything about the characterization about Goku was wrong in this film. Now, I'm not blaming the actor, because I do think he did try. I think you get the impression that Justin did do some research to try and get the real Goku out. And you can see that in his performance, but a lot of the stuff that's wrong with Goku that Justin gets criticized for isn't his fault, it's how the script was written. He's done the best he can with this script. I mean, he didn't know what the difference between a boy and a girl was in the comic books, yet he fancied Chi Chi. He didn't actually fancy Chi Chi in the comic books, even though he ended up marrying her and having two children. He got married because he thought it was food. Number seven, Piccolo. So yeah, Piccolo was also in this film, but he I don't know, there was something quite wrong. Now, I like Piccolo. Piccolo is probably one of my favourite characters in the whole Dragon Ball franchise. But this performance wasn't right. And which is a shame, because James Masters did, once again, try to do the best he can. And he's a Dragon Ball fan. But I don't think James Master was the right choice as actor. Because James Master's quite a funny, sarcastic, which Piccolo is normally, but it didn't come across in this film. Also, the look was wrong. What the hell was he wearing, that body armour? Neither of the two Piccolos, yes there was two Piccolos in the franchise, neither of them wore a body armour. They were mainly wearing robes, which would have been so much cooler, but no. And also, where did Piccolo's antenna go? Does anyone know that one? Number seven, henchmen. So one thing that both the anime, the comics and the film has 
is Piccolo has henchmen. Now, in the manga and the anime, those henchmen were, I don't know, tambourine, cymbal, you know, musical based henchmen. But in the film, he had Mai. No, no, Mai belonged to Emperor Pilaf. And also, going on Mai, she was completely different. She was a bit clumsy. She was the best of the trio, but she was a little bit clumsy in the anime. And here, in the film, no, she was actually a very good assassin and a very good thief and also could shapeshift. No, she couldn't shapeshift. That was down to Olaf and Ploa. Why was Mai shapeshifting in this film? She couldn't do it in the cartoon. Where did you get that one from? But that wasn't the worst henchman. Uzaru? No, Uzaru was never, ever a henchman of Piccolo. At best, and Uzaru is a henchman that belongs to Lord Frieza. That, but Frieza wasn't in this film, which was a shame because that would have been awesome. But no, Uzaru did not have anything to do with Piccolo whatsoever. Oh, what were they trying to do? Number six, Bulma. So now we have Bulma, another character taken directly from the anime and manga who was completely and utterly wrong. In the manga and anime, she was a typical girly girl who was trying to just uh, get a wish to have a boyfriend. That was what her driving motivation was. In the film, she wanted power. She wanted fame. She wanted fortune. And she could use guns. What? She has, seriously, she has a minor in advanced tactical weaponry. Where the hell did you get that one from? That was nothing like what the anime said. Why are you adding these so many different elements to this film that didn't need to be there? The anime was popular on its own. You changed it way too much and I'm only halfway through this list. <sighs> Number five, Roshi. Okay, anyone who's a fan of Dragon Ball loves the Turtle Hermit. Master Roshi. He's perverted. We all want to be like him, but we're, we're just a little bit more restrained. How's he portrayed in the film? Nothing, and I mean completely nothing like how he's portrayed in the anime. In fact, out of all the main characters of this film, he is probably the furthest away from how he's portrayed in the anime. He has that nice long beard. He lives in an island in the middle of the ocean, and like I said, he's a pervert. Every time he sees a naked woman, he has a nosebleed. None of that comes across in this film. In fact, he was a little bit more respectful and scared because he accidentally touched Bulma's bum. Number four, names. Have you ever wondered how they fly and do energy pass in Dragon Ball? Why they use their chi? Except not in this film, they use their ki. Huh? What? Why, why did you change that? And annoyingly, that wasn't the worst name change. The worst name change of all of them, everyone knows this. The Kamehameha Wave, everybody knows it. So how do the film call it? What do they call the Kamehameha Wave? The Kamehameha. No, that is what Goku screams when he's using it. The Kamehameha. Nah, I can't be bothered. Number three. Bad CGI. There's lots wrong with this film and I'm fed up of going through characters because I still can carry on. But let's get on with some things wrong with the actual film itself. And that was the CGI. Now sometimes the CGI was good, but when it came to Piccolo's children, and I'm gonna call them that even though they didn't say it in the film, but you knew what they were if you're a Dragon Ball fan. When they're being created, that animation was appalling. It looked like I had made it. Seriously, it's just so bad. All that money, where did it go? It did not go on the CGI because you look like you've got some YouTuber to do that. Number two, final fight. One of the main things about Dragon Ball in the franchise, it's a martial arts TV show. Granted, as it turns into Dragon Ball GT, there was more energy blast, but it was still fighting. So that was one thing I was hoping this film is going to have a redeeming feature was the final fights. Especially when it actually happened in Dragon Ball between Goku and Piccolo, that fight was 
awesome. And that's on a cartoon TV show. I'm pretty sure I said this about last week with last uh, Airbender as well. So what, if we're giving up, it's all down, it's down to Goku, it's down to Piccolo. What do we get? One move at Energy Blast. Film over. No, come on, I wanted a proper, you know, ha, 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 ha. But no, we didn't get any of that. And I apologize if I've just offended anybody, but that's what I wanted and we didn't get it. It could have redeemed this film a lot. Number one, The Eternal Dragon. So one of the most magnificent thing in the whole of the Dragon Ball franchise is Shenron, the Eternal Dragon. He is, I mean, look, this is him in Dragon Ball. This is his first appearance, episode 13 of the Dragon Ball anime. And look how magnificent he is. So what does this film give us? No. Do you know what? No, go away. Put the, put the other one back on. Thank you. This is what I wanted to see. He was massive, he was majestic, and you felt scared. The film, the one from the dragon, please take that back off. The one from the film, he looked like a dragon angel. No, he was never an angel. He just did what people wished, and that was it. And he looked so magnificent, majestic. He was awesome, but this film sort of just ruined that completely and utterly. Final thoughts. Now this is going to be very hard for me to try and be objective because at heart I am a Dragon Ball fan. But ultimately that is what's wrong with this film. This film wasn't catered to be Dragon Ball fans. This was catered to be non-Dragon Ball fans to try and get them into the franchise. But why would they be? They didn't like the anime. They're not going to like a live action version of it. It should have been geared around us and we could have got those non-Dragon Ball fans in to watch it. But no, the whole thing was just wrong. You changed way too much to try and make it Americanized. You should have actually just taken it back to the drawing board. Put the first issue of Dragon Ball as the main film. It would have been about two minutes long and it would have set the entire film up. But no, you didn't do that. I would actually say, if you want to get into Dragon Ball, go and watch the fourth anime film from Dragon Ball. It's a retelling, it's a second retelling of the original adventures but it was more the original adventures with emperor pilaf but instead of pilaf being the bad guy the red ribbon army it's brilliant and by this time you knew he was a super saiyan and they hinted at it that is a good film go and watch that but this and i'm trying to be objective but i can't i am such a dragon ball fan as i said piccolo is my favorite character i didn't like him and i love james masters as an actor he is brilliant uh, as I said, Justin Chadwick, I think he did get the best he could. You could see he was trying to get the real Goku out, but it was the script that was letting him down so he couldn't do it properly. And I don't get the impression that's what he wanted to do. That's what I think. I mean, there's a lot of good things to this film. The score's not that bad. It does get you in. I did actually didn't mind the Chi Chi being older and Goku reciprocating it, rather than him being a complete and utter, what, what's going on? I don't understand. I did actually understand and appreciate that, but ultimately there's just too much wrong from the source material. So I am going to actually rank this four. I'm gonna actually give it four, because they did try and the actors were trying. It was just the story, it was more the backgrounds behind the scenes that have let this film down. But that's my opinion, what do you think? Do you love this film? Is there anyone who does love this film? What did you think about the film? Let me know in the comments below and I'll reply to every single one of you if I can. On to next week. Well, so far we have done two films based on cartoon series that missed its heart and soul. So we're going to do a third and final one. So we're going to make a trilogy of cartoon films. Any guesses? Same again, I will pin the correct answer if anyone gets it. But until then, I will see you next Sunday, 6pm. Bye-bye.